Not to be too negative at the start of this video that I'm trying to make you watch, but the process of binding a guitar makes me frequently erupt into tears. I have recently acquired a jig by Elevate, which is a company providing Lou3 tools out in the States. I thought I'd give it a go for you on camera to see if I can't buck the trend of um, crying at work. There are several advantages to using the Elevate binding jig over your regular cradle jig. First one's pretty straightforward, it's just that it is a lot smaller than your average binding jig. Now if you're building a guitar you probably haven't got like a big huge workshop to play around with. If you do, fantastic. Can I come and visit? So with a binding jig like this, you're looking at a lot of uh, space saving opportunities. The second advantage I can think of is the setup time. You don't have to worry about everything being square to the cradle, to the bench. As you'll see, it's you just go. You just get up and go and it's really, really easy, straightforward and quick. So you shave a lot of time off there, which every little helps, you know? The other really nice thing about this jig is that when you have your binding and purflings, you can actually set the jig up so it will cut the exact thickness or depth of your raw materials. When you do it with a cradle, you have to spend quite a long time measuring, which can be a little bit precarious, and sometimes it's not right, so then that's stressful in itself. But this jig tackles that really nicely. So I'm just gonna jump in and show you around the jig so you can kind of understand how it works. Here's the entire jig. This, when I said it was small, I wasn't lying. Because they're out in the States, uh, they recommend using a Bosch Colt, which is what the jig fits. I can get hold of one in the UK. But luckily they uh, stock this adapter plate, which you can see I've screwed onto here, which allows me to use my English difficult router base. It's made of machined aluminium, it's really nice quality, it's got a little logo on there which is really cute. So I'll show you the orientation that we pop it in when we are about to route our channels. I've got my little workbench here, this is perfect height for me. I'm going to pop it on the side of the bench there and just use a couple of clamps to attach it. Again, super easy um, and yeah, it doesn't feel like it's taking up a lot of space, which is normally my concern when I'm using binding equipment. You know, you've got to make sure everything is out the way. Uh, it's, it's a bit stressful. So this is nice because I know where everything is. It's right here. It's centered on my workbench. It's not taking up a lot of room. Big into that. It also comes with these uh, router bits which screw onto your shaft, as it were, and yeah, so this just screws on really, really easily like this, so it's quite easy to change the router bits. So if you buy a couple or whatever, that's no problem. Quarter inch shank, which is, as I say, compatible with your basic laminate trimmer. Pop it in like this. Great. So there are three points of contact on this jig, two riding bearings, and you ride the sides of the guitar off that. And if you have the guitar riding against this back bearing at all times, you're not gonna be able to physically overcut your channels, which gives you a nice peace of mind about the whole thing. So it's got the back bearing, it's got the one nearer the front so you can square it off. And then it's got the bit, the, the donut that is traditionally used for binding that kind of just gives you something to ride against the router bit with. When you are routing the guitar, you will do it like this, upright, which is a little bit alarming, I won't lie to you. When I was doing it for the first time, it felt very unnatural because obviously I've learnt how to build guitars a certain way, so this is um, new for me and it does feel a bit precarious uh, to hold it upright, but the more I practiced um, on test pieces or whatever, and eventually when I bit the bullet and cut into the guitar, it did feel a lot um, less scary the more I did it, which of course is the case with anything new. Our first step is to check the calibration of the zero bar, because when we are like I said, setting the thickness of our, or the depth of our cut, we need to make sure that we are using our actual bindings, which I've got here, and actual purflings, which I've got here. It's quite hard to do that with a cradle because you're just constantly there with a little like measuring stick, just trying so hard and winding down and winding up and doing test cuts and whatever, it's just a bit of a pain. So this we know is gonna be dead on the correct thickness, which is quite nice. But in order to do that, we need to make sure that the zero point is completely correct. If you have already screwed this, your router to the actual base, I want you to grab your screwdriver back and just loosen up these screws. So I'll grab my square now. 
To set the calibration, you'll need to first wind up this bottom knob here so that the zero bar can be set properly. So just wind it all the way that it'll go so the zero bar is being touched, just like it is in this frame here. You'll then want to adjust your cutter manually to the highest point that it's going to go. Pop your square on those roller bearing guides and check that everything is flush with the top of the square. You might have to make some little adjustments by moving your router around, but when that's done, you can lock off that router base and tighten up your screws nicely. Dreamy. And I'm just going to check that calibration once more just to check it hasn't moved when I screwed it. And no, it's looking really good. So now we can, as I say, take our binding and use it as a real-time thickness gauge for the cut that we are about to make. All you need to do here is just wind down the same knob that you used when you were setting 0, 0.0 to the thickness of your materials. Lock it off and that's as easy as it gets. It, when you're doing this with purfling, you just want to add the purfling and the binding together. And same deal, that's completely your purfling set. When you're setting the depth, what I've done is got some calipers and just set it to the depth of my binding or my purfling depending, and then just used the ends of the calipers to make sure that the router is protruding X amount. Really, really simple. Don't overcomplicate it. And that is quite literally all you have to do to get this jig ready to cut your binding channel. I'm gonna be cutting through some Tasmanian blackwood here on one of my latest guitars that I'm building just to have around in the workshop. Um, so let's give it a whirl. Like everything in life, don't forget to wear protection and I will catch you on the flip side. When I finished shooting this video, I was honestly just super keen to get the binding work done. If you look me up on Instagram and want to follow along with this build, I'll be posting some pictures of the finished binding on there. If you want to check out Elevate stuff or order a jig for yourself, I've put some links for them in the bio. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully see you again soon.